Hello, boys and girls, men and women of all ages, shapes, and sizes. My name is Owen Adams, also known as British Gamer, and you are looking at something a little bit different here because I just made my first game today. I finished it this morning. I say I finished it. I finished the current phase of it this morning, and I'm going to show you right now because what I do on this channel is gameplay, after all. And uh, I thought I'd give you a go. Don't get too excited. It is very, very primitive right now. Uh, this is a piece of software called Click Team Fusion. Uh, there's my, my Mac menu there because uh, this is running in a virtual machine. Uh, I've got this on Steam. Uh, it's pretty good, by the way. You should check it out. The, there's a free version as well, a student version worth checking out. But the Steam version, I picked up this up in a Humble Bundle a little while ago. And this is a, a drag and drop game development uh, program, game and software development program. So here, for example, this is my layout for my game. It has two what are called frames. Frames are like areas. This is my, my high score table. And this is the area where I've set up the game. Now this is just my little guy here. Look at him. He's so cute. He's just a little guy. This is just a sprite uh, I drew very quickly. Uh, of Just a, a top-down guy. Four different directions. He's actually a little off-center. So walking around, he looks kind of dumb. I'm going to show you the game playing, and I'll talk you through how it works right now. Currently, it's just called Tiny Adventure. Um, it's very basic, but right now, while ever you're on the screen, the score goes up. Isn't that beautiful? And every seven seconds, a little blob pops in. Now, should you be foolish enough to touch the little blob, uh oh, you take a life. And you lose a little bit of health, and you, whoa, you knock back. So do you, should you touch three, you die. And that's that, just that frame. If I run the whole application, come on, you. So you get more score the longer you stay alive. Blobs will pop in. I'm going to walk into this one deliberately three times just to show you. Oh, high score, put my name in. There we go, beautiful. Space to try again, that restarts the game. So what we have right now is we've got a little character we can control. Uh, kind of. <laughs> this is not the final sprite. Little blob. I actually drew the sprite on this as well. Uh, now, actually, there's supposed to be a little blob noise every time they drop in. Where's that? Let's wait for the next one to come in. Okay, so basically, right now, the way this game works is you move the little guy around. Every seven seconds, a new blob will come in. But if you run into these things, you have three chances. You've got to keep moving, kind of, because... Ooh, oh, oh! Ah, there we go, that's the first time that's actually happened by mistake. You've got to keep moving, because if you stay still, well, you know, wherever it comes, you're as likely to get hit. Uh, now, you could just stay still, but eventually, these things are going to come and get you. Now, this is pretty early on right now. Uh, that there's, there's a lot of missing features. Obviously, if you want to, you can just stay still. And you're as likely to win as if you move around. Um, I've got a lot of features in mind for where this is going to go. The next feature is going to be if the um, if the randomly placed blobs land together, they're going to uh, combine to make a new blob uh, that's slightly bigger. That's the uh, the next big idea. And then the idea after that is to have blobs that will actually uh, come for you slowly. So that will encourage you to keep moving, basically. So um, that's kind of it right now in terms of the game. Like I say, right now, very, very primitive, uh, very, very basic. Uh, you would barely call it a game, except it does have, pop my scar on again, why not? It does have, oh, hold on, close my window here. It does kind of have, you've got your, your start conditions, your score. Uh, you, you do earn score for surviving. At the moment, it's very easy to survive, but you earn your score. You've got your enemy, you've got your lives, and then you've got your uh, damage and your death and a lose condition where you can put in your high score so it tracks your performance and the ability to restart the application if you want. So at the moment, it's pretty simple. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I did this because this is what I've been using lately, uh, Click Team Fusion to learn. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I'll show you some basic, uh, hold on, I'm going to get rid of this grid. I'll show you some basic features. What you can do is you can basically create an object. 
active objects tend to be like your, your player characters, things like that. Uh, makes them by default as a diamond, but then if I just edit this, I don't have my graphics tablet, so my drawings are going to be a little bit primitive, but uh, there we go. Here is our new object. And then you can go, you've got your properties here. Now it's, it's, it looks complicated, but actually when you do a couple of tutorials, it's pretty easy to figure out what you need and what you don't. You can then set, for example, um, movement type, uh, mouse controlled. So if I want, I can do this. Oh, 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 there we go. He's, he's currently limited within a frame there, but, oh, oh come on. Come on. I forgot how you get. Uh, uh. I remember how you get him to let go. No. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Got stuck in a little loop there because uh, I haven't actually put a condition in the game yet that says I can hit escape to close it, but that's coming up. But basically you can set things like that. So what I could do, for example, let's get rid of my smiley face now, is I could actually set this guy's movement to... Uh, I could actually set his movement to mouse controlled, start the game again, and then the game should, in theory, be exactly the same, but, uh, but he's controlled by my mouse, which looks a little stupid right now. <laughs> uh, okay, now I'm gonna have to wait until we have, there we go. Same thing. Uh, I haven't really changed anything except his method of control. Switch it back to eight directions now. Uh, in fact, let's just undo and then that'll preserve my settings from before, or maybe not. There we go. That's his back to the scratch with it. Um, and that's basically it. There are a few more complicated uh, things behind the scenes. This, for example, is my conditions editor, uh, which if you've used the thing before, you'll know how this works. But if you are new to this kind of software, uh, this basically programs all the behavior. This, for example, um, this, re this, this replaces scripting in that what you do is you control the interrelation of objects from behind here. So for example, this thing here, this is all related to my little guy sprite. And what this does is so-and-so is facing a direction and then the Lexus is not facing. So it's, it's, is he facing this direction or is he not facing this direction? Uh, and that controls an action which turns a flag inside the system on or off. Basically what that does is, uh, this, this triggers a flag on or off inside the software, depending on which direction he's facing, so that later on, uh, I can make certain conditions down here that relate to, is he facing this direction when he does something? Therefore, I can do this. So basically what this does is, uh, this creates the flags that define where the character's facing at any time. So if he's facing that direction, the flag is on. If he's not facing it, it's off. Uh, same thing for flags one, two, three, and four. And then this is when he collides with the blob. If he, if he collides with a blob and flag one is on, flag two, flag three, flag four, basically it controls that kickback. So when he walks into a blob and he, ne he knocks back, this controls which direction he gets knocked back, depending on where he was facing at the time he hit it. Um, so really it's, it's more simple than it looks, but it lets you do different things. Like for example, this, uh, this condition up here, collision between uh, guy and blob, uh, removes one uh, life from the player and plays a sound. Or, for example, I could set up a new condition pretty easily here. Uh, keyboard press. Upon pressing a key, uh, press key Q, uh, play sound. Samples, play sample, which we have, uh, cancel, no, not that. Browse. Boom. Okay, guys, so then go back to run the frame. Every time I hit Q, boom, basically. And that's kind of how it works. Um, so like I say, it's simple, but it's, um, flexible. There's a lot of room to work with it. 
Uh, and that's kind of my, my first game. I'll run it through again just so you guys can see it. Now, I'm like I say, I'm going to have changes and I'm going to try and keep documenting the progress. But right now, this is it. Got a little guy. Oh, something else, for example. Uh, the game doesn't define these edges. So I could just roll off the edge if I wanted to. So, for example, there's a condition in here that tests. Is he about to move off the edge? If he is, test his position and change it. Uh, so there you go. That's This is my first ever game. I've never built a game before. I've I've considered it. I've made games while I was learning Python. I did tutorials that uh, had games in them and I would make um, code sequences related to games and elaborate on them. But uh, it was pretty quick as well. I've been doing tutorials for about a week. Um, yesterday, I sat down and I started this. This morning, I got it to this stage. So very, very basic. Uh, very simple. And... What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep iterating on it. So, whoa, ah, ah, he's going in here. Um, so it's dirt simple, but British gamer, it is a game and I made it. Uh, I'll show you next when there's a little bit more to see. Uh, I'm going to be kind of um, working on new animations and sprites. I'm not an amazing artist digitally for stuff like that, so... I don't know how that's going to work out, but I can do better than that. Those were just made to be very, very quick. Um, and we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully with the next iteration, we have... Um, the, the most significant thing I want to get is those blobs chasing you. That's the most important thing. Those blobs have to chase you. Because at the moment, it's barely a survival game. It, it is a complete little game right now, but there's no there's no challenge to it until those blobs follow the player so i'm gonna try that and uh that's it thank you very much for watching i thought you'd be interested let me know what you think let me know if you if you've used click team you have suggestions i'd love to hear them if you uh if you want to play it um i'll put a link down below it runs on pretty much any version of windows uh and i'll see you later thanks for watching Bye bye